Hello again, guys. We're back here for 10.5, dealing with deductive reasoning. Uh, this deals with logic, and it's really the process of thinking logically about statements and being able to derive a conclusion based on facts or um, things that we know. So if we look here at uh, the law of detachment, kind of analyze this. I want to make sure you guys understand where this is at. If you are in your Pearson module right here, and you're uh, in the instruction set, if you come over to this little post-it looking thing, um, this is where your key concepts hide. So your law of detachment and your law of syllogism, those are both here. So this really goes back to our if-then statements. So if you see here, we have the if the hypothesis is true, then the conclusion is true. So what we're saying is if P, then Q. So what we really break it up to say is P is true, then Q has to be true. So the first problem you should have seen on SuccessNet here is using our law of detachment so we can break apart the hypothesis and the conclusion. So take a second to think about what can we conclude based on this situation here. And our conclusion should be that Felicia will, in fact, pass the course. Because if she got an A on the final, then she must pass the course. All right, make sure you've worked through the other few problems in problem one until you get up to the got it. Try that and then come back here for the answer. All right, this is pretty basic information, but uh, so our statement here is that if there is lightning, then it is not safe to be out in the open. So then what happens is Marla sees lightning. So since she saw, since the hypothesis happened, the conclusion has to happen. So she can conclude that it is not safe to be out in the open. If we look at B, B is a little different of a situation. We see that the hypothesis says if the figure is a square and our conclusion is then it has sides of equal length, and we look here at the, the statement, then figure A, B, C, D has sides of equal length. Well, it is satisfying the conclusion. It's not actually satisfying the hypothesis. So think to yourself for a moment, can you make the conclusion of it being a square? We actually cannot make that conclusion because if this only has sides of equal length, we know nothing about the angle measures. So we cannot make any conclusion. All right, go ahead and check out the extra practice problems right here. Think about is the hypothesis being satisfied or is the conclusion being satisfied? If the hypothesis is satisfied, then the conclusion will have to happen. So when I analyze situation one, I've kind of color coded here. I've got the hypothesis in yellow. If the doctor suspects a broken arm, then she should take an x-ray. And then doctor can't really say this name, suspects that Lily has a broken arm. So our conclusion for this, since this is satisfying the suspects patient has a broken arm, that's our hypothesis. So we know the conclusion will happen. All right, when we look at situation two here, our if three points are on the same line, that is our hypothesis, then they are collinear would be our co conclusion. Points X, Y, and Z are on line M, so that makes them on the same line, which satisfies our hypothesis, which means that we will satisfy our conclusion. So we can say that points X, Y, and Z are collinear. And then I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that because it is our conclusion. So here's the law of syllogism, and this will probably make sense when we get into a real example. Um, you can read this on your own, but essentially what it's saying is, uh, this is a good example here. If it is July, then you work, then you are on summer vacation. If you are on summer vacation, then you work at a smoothie shop. So our conclusion that we could make is if it's July, then you are working in a smoothie shop. And I kind of wrote it out down here so you could see it. If A, then B, and if B, then C. So what we can immediately do is just jump straight from A to C. If we know A, then we know B and we know C. So we can go straight from A to C. So now we're into problem two. So take a second to think about this. Pause the video if you don't want to listen to me jabber. So if a figure is a square, then the figure is a rectangle. And that is something that should be way back in your math brain. That should be memorized. If a figure is a rectangle, then the figure has four sides. So what would be, using the law of syllogism, our conclusion that we make here? This is kind of like our A statement. And this is kind of like our B statement. Then our B statement is restated. And then we have our C statement. So if A, then B. If B, then C. So what can we say? Well, we can conclude that if A, then C. So if a figure is a square, then the figure has four sides. Go ahead, try that on your own for B. Figure out what would be our conclusion here using the law of syllogism. If you haven't paused the video yet, do so now. 
but hopefully your conclusion is if you do gymnastics, then you are flexible. But we have the same conclusion here. So since if A then B, if, well now this is not B, so I have to have a progression. So this would have to be if you are flexible, then you do ballet, but this is in the wrong order. So since we see the same conclusion statements here, we can't actually make that because if I try to make the same jump conclusion that I've always made, that'd still be the same if A then B. All right, go ahead and look at your uh, got it here. I'm gonna use the color coding of yellow for our statement A, green for our statement B, and blue for our statement C. Notice that if A goes to B and if B goes to C, then A can go straight to C like we've been saying. So pause the video for a second, figure out what conclusions we could make from A and B using the law of syllogism. So here we go, it is color coded for you. So if you were unable to, go ahead and make that conclusion now. So our resulting conclusion here would be if a whole number ends in zero, then it is divisible by five, which is a good rule to keep in your back pocket, especially when we start to get into uh, factoring out trinomials. So now look at B. If AB and AD are opposite rays, then the two rays form a straight angle. So go ahead, think about the color coding that we would do and think about the conclusion that we can try to make from this. So notice here again that we have um, we have our initial hypothesis and then the conclusion to that hypothesis. Then we actually have a new hypothesis and the same conclusion that we had from the original hypothesis. So actually for B, no conclusion is possible. You always wanna make sure that you're looking for something to be restated right after it got stated. So like in A, if a whole number ends in zero, then it's divisible by 10. If a whole number is divisible by 10, we kind of repeat ourselves. That did not happen down here. We kind of broke the order. So there is no conclusion based on the law of syllogism. Try three and four just to make sure that you're doing all right in this and then come back for the answer. So pause the video now. I've got three color coded for you now here. If an animal is a Florida panther, then its scientific name is Puma concolor cori. And then we restate that if an animal is a Puma concolor cori, then it is endangered. So like I just said, if we restate the same thing and then we go on to a new conclusion, then we can use the law of syllogism to make our conclusion. And we're able to say that the Florida panther is an endangered species. So go ahead, try number four on your own. Pause the video right now. So then our final conclusion that we can use the law of syllogism to make is if a line intersects a segment at its midpoint, then it divides the segment into two congruent segments. So now we're going to look at using the law of syllogism and the law of detachment together at the same time. So let's check out this situation. So what can we conclude from this given information? So if you live in Accra, then you live in Ghana. If you live in Ghana, then you live in Africa. And Asa lives in Accra. So what can we conclude based on all of this put together? So we use our first two statements to make the law of syllogism to conclude, make your hypothesis right now, and that would be that if you live in Accra, then you live in Africa, because we can just skip past the Ghana. That's our B, so Accra was our A, Ghana was our B, and Africa is our C statement here. So then we can use this new conditional statement to apply our law of detachment and make a conclusion. So if Asa lives in Accra, and we know that if you live in Accra, then you live in Africa, then Asa must live in Africa. All right, so take a moment and look at the got it. Remember, we're trying to combine lots of different statements and apply both of our different laws here. So take some time, pause the video, and really try to make these conclusions on your own. So the first thing we're going to do here is look at my original statements. If the rivers, if a river is more than 4,000 miles long, then it is longer than the Amazon. If a river is longer than the Amazon, then it's the longest river in the world. So I in initially start by saying if a river is longer than 4,000 miles, then it is the longest river in the world. That then lets me conclude based on this statement down here, since the Nile is 4,132 miles long, then the Nile must be the longest river in the world. So our final conclusion statement that we make from here is this right here. And we used both the law of syllogism and the law of detachment to make that happen. 
So B then here asks us, does it matter whether we use the law of syllogism or the law of detachment first? Now that first is the really important part there. So notice that we used the um, we use the law of syllogism first, which is how we did the if A then B, if B then C, so if A then C, and we were able to jump right from um, being longer than 4,000 to being the longest river. If we didn't do that first, if we just used the law of detachment, what would happen is we would say the Nile is more than 4,000 miles long, then the Nile is longer than the Amazon River, and then the Nile is the longest river in the world. So it's kind of really, really redundant. Instead, if we apply the law of syllogism first, we can make our single statement here and then use the law of detachment to say the Nile is the longest river in the world. So long story short, yes, it does matter. So now try five and six on your own, which means pause the video and do it. Um, so you're gonna use the law of detachment and law of syllogism to make these conclusions. If this is not possible, you need to explain why. So I even just about fell in the trap for number five here. It is actually given to you in the wrong order, or not necessarily wrong order, but in a, in a tricky order. So it says, if a mountain is the highest in Alaska, and that's the highest in the US, if an Alaskan mountain is more than 20,300 feet high, then it's the highest in Alaska. So notice, highest in Alaska, highest in Alaska. That is our repeated statement B. So this is actually our statement A. If an Alaskan mountain is more than 20,300 feet, then it is the highest mountain in Alaska. And if it's the highest mountain in Alaska, then it's the highest in the world, or in the United States, sorry, definitely not the world. And then we see that Mount McKinley is 20,320 feet high, so what conclusion can be made? So we could initially start by saying if an Alaskan mountain is more than 20,300 feet, then it is the highest in the US, and because Mount McKinley satisfies this hypothesis, we can make a final conclusion saying Mount McKinley is the highest mountain in the US. Go ahead, try the same thing in number six. So if you're color coding this, start with our initial hypothesis. If you live in the Bronx, our conclusion, then you live in New York. But then we see Tracy lives in the Bronx. Okay, well, I can highlight that as like my other statement that doesn't really match up. I mean, we could then say Tracy lives in New York, but we have another statement down here. So actually when I analyze this, if you live in New York, well, live in New York, I already used that. So that is actually like my statement B. <clears throat> then you live in the 11th state to enter the union. So now we can use the law of syllogism first and say, if you live in Bronx, we can jump through the New York step and just go straight to, then you live in the 11th state to enter the union. And our final conclusion, that Tracy lives in the 11th state to enter the union. I had a little bit more practice, at least until I run out of time. So check out all these statements, which we know that we are assuming are true. Then we're going to look down here at 13 through 18 to try to determine, are these true, maybe true, or not true? So take a moment to analyze all this. The first thing that I want to look at is Maria is drinking juice, or Maria, depending on how you pronounce it. That loops back up to A, and if Maria is drinking juice, then it's breakfast time, so we know it's breakfast. So then if I come down here to D, if it's breakfast, Julio is drinking juice. So here for Julio drinking juice, this must be true. Then if I look at 14, Curtis is drinking water. If it is meal time, then Curtis is drinking water and nothing else. Well, breakfast is a meal time, so 14 also must be true. So now if I look at Kira drinking milk, all I know about Kira is that if it's lunchtime, she drinks milk. So could this be true? Yes, it might be true because we don't know what she drinks at breakfast. So then we see that Curtis is drinking juice. So, we look up here at Curtis, if it is meal time, Curtis is drinking water and nothing else. Well, we know that it's breakfast, so it is meal time. So we know that Curtis would be drinking water and not juice, so this is not true. So now I see that Maria is drinking water, and what I see is if Maria is drinking juice and it's breakfast, Maria is drinking juice, but we don't know if she drinks anything else. So this statement also may be true. So now when I look at Julio drinking milk, it is breakfast, we already know this, then Julio is drinking juice and nothing else. So that means that 18 must in fact be not true. So that wraps up our lesson for today. Please let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. And if I was you, I would keep 
trudging through chapter 10. You've only got a couple lessons left, uh, so please let me know. Thanks and have a great day.